Usually, before I go shaking my tits for the press, I like to go see how the professionals do it. Some might say the chief of police has no business in an institution like this. But in fact, it's the quietest and safest place in town. You won't run into any reporters, nobody gets into any fights, nobody drinks too much, nobody even raises their voice. The place is owned by an elderly gentleman who knows how to keep things under control. That's why I never invite my friends here. I wanted to make an exception for my 60th birthday, but most of my colleagues are young enough to be my sons, and they'd rather just hire prostitutes. Why stare at some boobs when you can take the whole package for yourself? But there's none of that in our club. Even looking too long is considered indecent. You can get an occasional glimpse, like by accident. The rest of the time you just pretend that you're immersed in conversation, or just come by for a drink. Doesn't mean these gentlemen wouldn't want their bald heads smothered in tits. It's just that nobody says it out loud. My younger colleagues might call it hypocrisy, but I call it the good old-fashioned manners. Good manners and leave the rest unsaid. She agrees to unbutton her blouse, and we agree not to pay too much attention. The girls are on a quiet prowl, too. They're looking for a way out of their cramped rooms. Maybe make friends with some wealthy patron with a pacemaker and dentures. Everybody wants something. But we have to control ourselves, or we'll all turn into libertines and prostitutes. Hell, if there weren't any rules, I'd be belching and farting, jumping up on the table, arms held high, yelling, Shake it, baby! That's a nice touch. No idea how I got so barbaric. Hello, friends. Welcome to This is the Police. With the dulcet tones of John St. John as seemingly the lead character, making a little cameo line from Duke Nukem. That was. I enjoyed that. So, all I've. All I've done with this game so far is opened it to test it, see how it goes. So this is pretty much an entirely new thing for me. We're gonna go new game. And we'll see what the police actually is. So yeah, hello friends. I've I've been very absent. I know I have. <laughs> um, I moved to Perth and that's taken up a lot of my time. My laptop was broken for eh, a good seven months and generally I've just... I've not really had time to do this but now that my life sort of steadied out a bit um, I'm no longer newly working in a new restaurant. I'm I'm very settled here and I reckon I, I've got enough time to actually start putting out videos on a fairly regular basis. So I thought I'd start with this because I've heard it's very, very good. So, day seems to begin with us Getting the newspapers, the Golden Bird is suggesting Mayor Rogers might be a sex maniac. Not met Mayor Rogers yet, but I'm sure he's delightful. City Hall confirms rumours of Jack Boyd's res resignation. Now I've heard that Jack Boyd is the main character, so kind of seems well, possibly a little strange that they're starting the game with me resigning. That's from the Freeburg Tribune, and the fact. Freeburg's number one paper. Hmm. Mark War II to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal request. So basically, the idea I get Mayor Rogers is he's a bit of a douche. Hmm. Okay, let's go to work. Oh. There it goes.
When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. Okay, so far I really like the dialogue in this game. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Okay. Good morning. Yesterday, the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise? Or did you know about it in advance? Well, it did come as a surprise because, you know, I've literally just started the game. I don't want to quit my job. Uh, I've been expecting this bullshit from the mayor. The mayor discussed it with me. Surprise. What's the difference? What's, what's the difference? I think there were some clues in that cutscene to sort of keep the truth in. <laughs> that is a shrouded answer. What does it matter whether it came as a surprise? My business is my own. I cannot do a Johnson John, I'm afraid. Do you already know the name of your successor? No, I think it's a new man. It, I think it'll be a department veteran, or who cares? Uh, no, I do not. Of course not, and I don't think the mayor's office knows who it is either. Okay. We're not really holding back. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy, Francis Kendrick, said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Hmm. I don't know. I don't have a clue. Who's Francis Kendrick, apart from my deputy? Let's just say perhaps. Sounds possible if he thinks the new office would help him serve the city a little longer. I think I'm giving a professional little press conference here. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe the police are cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? Okay, so Kendrick's been accused of a bit of Mafia also work. Okay. Mm. He is my deputy. Should I... I think I'll stand up for my deputy. Excuse me, but that's a pile of horse shit. The Mafia and police working together, maybe they're in cahoots with the aliens. The Mafia are a bunch of low-life criminals. How about someone ask a real question? <laughs> hey, hold nothing back. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Definitely, definitely not. Possibly, how should I know? Uh, it sounds like it may have been. I think we'll give the professional answer. Definitely not. 
That's just not possible. Mayor Rogers is a true professional and he makes his decisions carefully. There's no place in our jobs for hard feelings. Okay. Thank you. You're fucking welcome. I How's the bat you today, Mr. Shit. Boy? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. Oh, maybe we don't like Kendrick. Jack does seem a bit cynical, so... Ah, Vicodin. Possibly. Ugh. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Oh, Mayor Rude, Rogers. arrogant, yeah. no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. Had to be. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, mm. white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Dress for women. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. <laughs> he never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. Quickly. Adverb. Sorry. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well... This morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> don't, uh, don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension, one that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. One hundred and eighty days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. Ooh. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Huh. Yeah, he's a douchebag. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the oh, mayor my. has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <laughs> I don't know why the subtitles are lagging so far behind. That's a bit of a disappointment. Okay. Day two. So that was all of day one, apparently. Um. Okay. Kind of. Along the lines of what I expected, uh, a nice little introduction to the story, and we'll see what happens day two. Golden Bird says, Jack Boyd. Only assholes join the Mafia. <laughs> Jack Boyd believes feud with Mayor led to his res resignation. Jack Boyd, the re my retirement is my own business. Yeah. Okay. I did read about it in the papers the next day. That's... Good continuity, I suppose. 
Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. <laughs> the only people eating here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick, he recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. <laughs> Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Okay. Tutorial, would you like to receive tips about how the game works? Uh, I'm a 60-year-old police chief a few months away from retirement. I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job. It's, it's a lovely answer, but we're going to have to get a little tutorial, because I don't know how to play the game. Shifts. Freeburg Police Department organises upcoming work assignments into shifts for today and tomorrow. Okay. Every shift, officers respond to crimes in pro excuse me, progress. And detectives continue their investigations. You can freely move employees between shifts. All officers and detectives possess several important characteristics. Professionalism. The little star rating. Shows the overall efficiency level of your policeman. A figure around 150 is considered average. Well, this guy's 1,200. Must be very good. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is not entirely reliable. While those whose professionalism is considerably higher than average are a safe bet. Even in a pinch. An individual's level of professionalism may rise and fall over the course of their career. Okay. Energy shows how tired your policemen are. That must be the bar on the right there. Okay. The less energy your people have, the less reliable their work, and a policeman who is exhausted might fall asleep at the wheel or make a critical error on the job. Okay. They lose one point of energy after each working day and restore one point after each day. Of okay. So, as long as we have people working every second day, we should be okay. Hidden characteristics. They don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are hidden from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with any reason they can to think they can think of to take the day off. While others like to drink too much. You can only guess about these things, but you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behaviour of your employees. This is this is sounding great so far. A management sim where the people actually have a little bit of personality. Okay, shift B. Why aren't we starting with shift A? I don't know. Okay, so shift B consists of Kochi. Can we click on them? No. Kochi, Yancey, Purdy. They are well above average. Well, reasonably above average. Subaki, Asano, Austin. They're below average, but serviceable. And Price who is five points of professionalism. Hmm. Okay. Don't know how I feel about that. No, no, no. I do know how I feel about that. Not very good. Mole, DeBrittle and Armstrong, they're in grey. Okay. Are they my... Are they superiors? Who knows? We'll just start the day. Okay. Day two, ten o'clock. <laughs> nice. Okay, calls. Responding to calls is the bread and butter of police work. 
You'll need to send your officers to the crime scene before the timer expires. A mark on the map shows where the call came from. The farther away the destination, the longer it will take your officers to travel back and forth. So the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. Okay, so they actually travel out and... Oh! Do I click on this? It's been a hit and run at the Everyday Mall. I have 15 seconds or minutes. 15 minutes, I would imagine, to answer it. Okay. The easiest way to determine how difficult a task might be is to check how many units you're allowed to send on the call. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat. Particularly risky missions give you the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. Okay. So, yeah, I have a SWAT team there. The number of slots is not the only thing to consider. Any available information from the location of the crime scene to the presence of weapons, all of this can tell you how seriously each case should be taken. A mission might look simple at first glance until it turns into a brutal meat grinder, or a serious call can come in which turns out to be a false alarm. Okay. So, hit and run, everyday mall. A married couple exited a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot back over a homeless man who'd been digging through a trash can. The driver jumped out to help, but once he saw he'd hit a bum, got back in the van, and quickly drove away. Okay. That sounds like a job for... It sounds... moderately... Serious. Let's, let's send Yancey. And we'll send him with... Send two people for this one, so I don't know if I should send two. Does it need two? Yeah. Might give Violent when we catch him. If we catch him. Should be in a fight at the last picture show theatre. A theatre manager reports that during a showing of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theatre carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. <laughs> when he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theatre security guard. Okay. So this is a, a crime in progress. It literally says that there. Let's, uh, let's send Kochi with... Kochi and Asano. Kochi and Tsubaki. Just because they both end in I. <laughs> I have no logic behind any more than that. So do we wait for more calls to come in? Do we wait for... Oh, we wait for inclement weather. There's a report on the hit and run. When everything goes well, the police capture the criminals and nobody dies. But the truth is, sometimes the criminals manage to escape. Just try to avoid any dead cops or civilians. Dead cops will hurt your roster, and dead citizens bother the mayor even more than living ones. Okay, how do we do? Offender caught, officers unharmed. Ah, they gain 10 points. Okay. I like it. There's a report on the fight at the movie theatre. Coach and Subaki. Offender caught, no one hurt. Perfect. Ten points. Armed robbery in the suburbs and a fight at Johnson, Jurgen and Katz Law Firm. Okay. A brother and sister clashed with each other over their deceased father's will. According to one of the lawyers, we don't dare separate them, and our security guard is off tonight. Mm. That doesn't sound like a... a huge fight. We'll send Yancey. And... No. We'll give Purdy a run out with Asano. I don't want to send price on anything with a professionalism, professionalism level of five. 
to for this as well. It's an armed robbery in the suburbs. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun, Jesus, robbed a videotape store and made off with the, the whole collection of adult movies. They fled in a car, but the store manager wrote down the license plate. The owner is a Janet Brown who lives in the suburbs. Yancey, Austin, you did well earlier. Please do well again. Price is left here with the SWAT team. <laughs> Gang bang in progress. <laughs> God, she's like. Oh, she seems to have alcohol problems as well. Okay. She's old, she has alcohol problems, and she's been left with the SWAT team. But don't worry. This team. Team Kochi Subaki are back. But they are going to go out again to this assault in the ghetto. A passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, run away with his guitar and his money. Assault and robbery. Kochi. Tsubaki. And Price, why not? We'll throw Price in there. Got everyone out now. Oh. When your cops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask you to handle the situation. Try to deal with whatever comes up, but don't waste all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your plate. Okay. Time has stopped, which is good. Uh, the vehicle in question is parked right outside the Brown residence. The sounds of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through our living room window. Knock on the door, open up, police. Turn on the side and loudspeaker and shout that the house is surrounded. Sneak into the house through an open window. Let's siren, loudspeaker. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Yancey and Austin. Well done. And a report on the fight. Party in Sano. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Okay. Day two is going well so far. Just need to wait for Kochi, Tsubaki and Price. I'm getting to the assault in the ghetto. There. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Okay, shutters have come across, and I have an option to end the day. Do I want to end the day? It's been... Yeah, we'll end the day while it's successful. Overtime. If you think you'll need a couple of extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cop to come in and work overtime. But if they're working flat out, they'll be much more exhausted, and someone's bound to make a mistake. Yeah, I agree. How shift day look? Shift day has Stovall with 400 star points. That's... Fantastic. Vandal and Robbins, who are average. Samadhi, Grant, below average. Birch, below average. Birch Jr., father and son. And Roy, who has five points. Easily and Moser, I, I couldn't see. There were three guys. Three people on the other shift. Mole, DeBrittle and Armstrong. Or Sue Perkins, as this apparently is. Mold, Brittle, and Armstrong. I wonder where they were. Beasley and Moser, they're the same colour. That's Lobos Jr. Hmm. Okay, looking at Shift A, I don't think we need any overtime for tomorrow. Let's just end the day there. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office. He liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years he's played loose with the law. 
And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. <laughs> Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Okay. He goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people, old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go Kendrick there. Is in with never the have, never you? will. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to end this video here. Um, I don't know. Two days in, I'm enjoying this, but... It seems to be a time limit of 180 days, which, I don't know. Tuesdays has taken half an hour. I don't know if they'll get quicker, but that would lead to about 90 hours of gameplay from this. <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, friends, thanks for watching. I promise it won't be quite as long until my next video. In fact, I'm probably going to go ahead and record it directly off the back of this one. So, I'll see you next time, guys.